Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take this and turn it into this. So I've had a lot of questions on how I finish off my Vintage Truck of the Month series. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do it. And I want you to know that I did not come up with this on my own. I saw a video tutorial on Fat Quarter Shop, so you're welcome to go check out their video as well. But I thought I would show you specifically how I finish off this one. I'll show you what size to cut all your pieces at and also where I got this fun little background from. Now the cool thing about doing it this way is that you don't have to repurchase this background block because we're gonna be reusing it for every single month. And all we're gonna be doing is just switching out the front stitching each month. So it makes it a little bit more cost effective. You can make all the little pieces, store them in like a nice little box, and then just continue to reuse this nice little wooden background piece. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's what you're gonna need to finish off your vintage Truck of the Month series cross stitch pieces. So for this project, you're gonna need a couple of different supplies. Now I got these at my local hardware store, so you're gonna need some washers. These are 1 8 by 1 inch, um, and so they're pretty good size. You can get whatever size you like, depending on how big your cross stitch piece is. You're gonna also need some of these round ceramic disc magnets. And these ones, does it say what size they are? One inch in diameter as well. You're also gonna need your cross stitch piece you're gonna need a rotary trimmer or some scissors, whatever you have on hand. You're also gonna need some of this peel and stick board. And a lot of people call it sticky board or peel and stick board. You can get it from Fat Quarter Shop. You can get it from Amazon. Um, I got this, I think, at Hobby Lobby. Um, and it just has a sticky background on one side and then you can just peel it off. And so it kind of makes it this giant sticker. You're also gonna need a hot glue gun. And I highly suggest getting a gun that's decent. Those little tiny ones that come in all the fun cute colors are super cute, but they don't work very well. This one has a nice thick glue stick in it. It gets really nice and hot. So if you're gonna be doing any amount of hot gluing, I suggest getting a decent one. It also came with these little don't burn your finger <laughs> thingies. You can use these if you want. And then you're also gonna need some background fabric that matches your cross stitching. So this will be different depending on what size your finished pieces are, but I figured I'd show you how I do my vintage truck series pieces. So I cut one piece of sticky board that is three and three quarters inches, and then I cut a larger one that is four and a quarter inches. That means that that larger one will just be about a quarter of an inch larger than my smaller board. So I can kind of see my fabric sticking out around the edge. And I just want it kind of peeking out around the edge there. You can kind of see it there. Um, and so you can cut it whatever size you want based on your piece, but that's what size I cut them for my cross stitch pieces. The next thing I'm gonna do, this smaller one is gonna go with our cross stitch piece. So I'm just gonna set it there. The next thing I'm gonna do is pick some fabric that I want. I chose this fun gingham print. And for gingham, I like to put it, if I have enough, I like to kind of put it on a diagonal like that because I think it just looks a little bit better on the edge. And so what I'm gonna do is just take my board and I'll just line it up and on some sides here and just kind of figure out, I try and use the least amount of fabric possible. Um, and I just have my fabric so it's about an inch all the way around. And then I'm not even measuring this. I'm just gonna set this board on here, kind of eyeball it. And then I'm just taking my rotary trimmer and I'm just kinda cutting around the edge here. Okay, so I didn't even measure that. I just kind of loosely cut it. And as you can see, those squares aren't even perfect. It's not gonna matter at all. Okay, so just cut a piece where you have enough around the outside that you can kind of work with it. Now, the next thing I do is I go ahead and prepare my pieces. And I'm just going to get my little pad in here since I'm gluing in my sewing room. I don't wanna to make too big of a mess. And this peel and stick board just has one of the sides that peels off and it's just sticky. And so what I'll do is flip my fabric over and I can still kind of see my design there. And by the way, no, I don't iron this cause it'll get kind of stretched out when we do this. So I don't even worry about it. But if you have a piece that's super, I guess, you know, super messy, then I guess you could iron it. And then I'm just gonna line it up on there and press it down. And I try to just line it up so it's kind of lined up on some of these pieces. And then you can flip it over and just double check. If you don't like it, you can, um, it's just, it's sticky, but it's not like permanent. So you could reposition this. So I think that looks good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that. It's not even perfect around the edges. If you have a bunch of extra fabric here, you can just take that and trim it off. 
just trim it off a little bit so you don't have quite as much around the edges. But honestly, it doesn't even really matter. I totally do not worry about the, what the backs of these look like. And as a matter of fact, I'll show you the back of this one. See, it's all messy, but no one would ever know. So the next step is to hot glue this on just to seal it because it's only sticky on one side, so the back isn't sticky. So my hot glue gun is ready. And I'm just gonna drop a little dot right there in the corner and pull my corner up. And I kind of try and pull it up so it's you know relatively straight. But again, honestly, this really doesn't matter. And I'm just going to put one dot in each corner. Pull that in. Again, if you're worried about getting burnt with the hot glue, you can use those little protectors. And this stuff dries super fast. Okay, so once I've got the corners in, I'm just going to pull up the edges just like that. And I just try and make sure that the corners look nice and tight. I'm just going to run a little bit of glue right along there. And then I just take it and just pull it up nice and tight and just press. And I like to push away from me. I think I just get a better crease. Okay, again, just take it and pull it up. We can go back and clean up the corners in a little bit. Just get the main pieces down. And one more. And then if you have any of these little corners that are kind of still peeking up, let's look at it in the front. It's pretty good. If you have any corners that aren't perfect, you can add a little bit of hot glue to the corners to just kind of tighten them up. I'm actually going to add some to this little extra bit that I have here because I don't want it like flopping up too much. Okay. All right. Now, if you wanted to be fancy and you didn't want to see like an ugly backing. You could definitely cut another board, finish it the same way, and then place them wrong sides together, and then you would have two finished edges. Because this is going on a backing piece like this, I am not going to worry about it, but keep in mind that that would be an option if you don't want to see this, you know, back piece. Like if it was gonna be something hanging that could be twisting and you might see the back end, that might be an option. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is take one of our washers and we're going to place that just right here in the middle. And so I'm just going to put like a bead of glue right there and just pop that on. Just kind of make sure it's relatively centered. Okay. And we're done with this piece for now. So we can just set that piece aside and then we're going to grab our stitching. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to peel off the front and then I'm going to take my stitching and I'm just gonna do my best to center my piece on there and I can kind of see through it. So I'm just kind of looking, just try and make sure it looks like it's straight and then I'll even pull it over the edges just to see like, does it look like it's relatively centered on there? I think it's a little bit far to this side. So I'm gonna try and keep it about the same distance up. Just scoot it over slightly. Okay, I think that's gonna look pretty good. And now we're gonna go ahead and just glue this down just like we did the other one. And as you can see, it's not perfectly centered, but I just have enough of this fabric around the edges that I can get it folded over. And this fabric is a little bit stiffer, especially if you're using the White Count Ada that I did. Um, it is a little bit harder to fold, but it also kind of holds it. If you fold it, it kind of holds it a little bit better too. So. Kind of depends on what fabric you're using as to how easy it's going to be going around this corner. And I probably should have cut this piece just slightly larger. I think I was working on a piece of scrap <laughs> fabric that I had, so I usually try and leave myself closer to an inch, and I don't quite have that here, but I think we'll still be able to make it work. So I just do all of my corners first. And then again, I fold up and away from myself.
And I suppose you could do as many layers as you wanted with this. Um, as far as like, you know, you could do your stitching, you could do this next layer, you could cut a piece that's another, you know, just a little bit bigger and have like it stacked three times. So kind of just depends on what you prefer, what look you're going for. Um, so just have fun with it. The cool thing about hot glue is it's pretty forgiving. I mean, it dries relatively quickly, which is nice. And also if you don't like it, I mean, you can always kind of go back and just pull it off and redo it, so. Now my corners aren't very pokey or square, and you can really grab those and kind of pinch them in if you want. And I usually try and pull the corners first and then I'll pull this middle in so that I can kind of get that corner down. Now, like I said, my corners aren't um, super pointy. So if that bugs you, you can take your hot glue gun and just add a little bit more glue right here on the corner and just pinch it in. Okay, so you can kind of do that to all your corners. I didn't do a very good job on this one. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's a little bit easier if you have more fabric, um, but I also don't, it doesn't bug me. So anyways, once you're done getting your cross stitch piece all glued on, then the last step is just to take your finished back piece and then I just run a bunch of hot glue, sorry, on this one, not that one. And I'll usually try and get some in the corners. You just don't want it so close to the edge that when you uh, press it on, you're gonna be getting it seeping out onto the front. So that's my only criteria, just try and put enough on to hold it, but not so much that it's gonna pop out. And then I just try and center it on there, press it down, just hold it for a second and you're good to go. Okay, and so now we've got our new month and we've got our backing piece. And now I just glue the magnet, hot glue magnet onto my backing piece. Now this is a really small piece, so I only put one magnet on here and one washer on the backs of these pieces. Um, but if you had a larger piece, you'd wanna do more magnets, just however many you would need. If you had like a really big piece, I'd probably do five, one in each corner maybe, and one in the middle. If it was really big, you might wanna do like six down it, kinda depends on the size of your piece. Now, just for all of you who are asking, I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I got it there this summer. It's probably around um, August of 2021. And let's see if I can get that number on there for you. I don't know if they still have it or not. It just says Hobby Lobby 1120, maybe that number on top there. So this was just a little wooden piece. It has a saying in there. I don't even know what it says anymore because I covered it up. Um, but I just went and got something that was the right size. I wanted something that was square um, and that was large enough to hold my trucks. And then now when I hang it up on my wall, I can just swap out my months just like that. So it's now February, so I can put February on there and it's just super fast and easy. And that's also why I didn't really bother finishing the back of this. This looks super messy, but it magnets on here and you're never gonna see it. So here are all the pieces that I finished so far. I finished them all the same way except for December, just like I said. And what I've gone ahead and done is gotten all my sticky board and I pre-cut 12 of the smaller pieces and 12 of the larger pieces. So it's all ready to go. And then as soon as I finish each, month, each month's cross stitch, I can go ahead and just pick some fun fabric and go ahead and finish it off. And it's just really fast and easy. As always, all the supplies for today's video will be linked down below the video. All right guys, so that is it. That's how I finish off my cross stitch pieces. As you can see, it's super easy. It's not glamorous. I mean, it's just fast and easy, um, but I think it actually turns out really cute in the end. Now I have seen some of you guys, I'm new to cross stitching, and so I'm also new to finishing cross stitching. I have seen some of the way you guys have finished it and you guys are kind of blowing it out of the park. You have all kinds of fun ideas. So if you do finish yours um, this way or a different way, make sure to share it with me on social media so that I can kind of see what you do. You're also welcome to email me a picture if you're not on social media. I just love seeing how other people finish these off because you guys are way more creative than I am. So anyways, that is going to be it for today's video. That's how I finish off my pieces. Super fast and easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming fun. So thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. So I've had a lot of questions on how I finish off my vintage, vintage truck cross stitch pieces. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to finish off your crust is So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to finish so I've had a lot of questions on how I finish off my vintage truck series pieces and so today that's what we're gonna be.